advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and we are doing a no run through review for Under Dark Waves and a refreshing review on Arkham Horror 3rd Edition because boy, did our uh, opinions change of 3rd Edition um, quite a bit. So, uh, let's go ahead and talk about the Under Dark Waves expansion first, um, and then we can kind of touch on a little bit of 3rd Edition and kind of uh, where we're at with it. So, the Under Dark Waves expansion brings in more of the same. It just gives you more content to 3rd edition. Now, if you love 3rd edition, then uh, great. It's an expansion you can easily go out and get because it gives you more scenario cards. It gives you uh, more scenarios, or not uh, not scenario cards, more encounter cards and more scenarios. It gives you four scenarios. It gives you a bunch more uh, characters to play. The ones that you see all over the place, you know, uh, Ash Campy, the, you know, the, the fucking... The waitress, the the politician, Father Mateo, or whatever is it Mateo? Hell yeah, yeah. very good. Um, it, it it just gives you more characters uh, to play, and uh, and a little bit new newer mechanics that came into uh, into the game. Uh, two of which are the major ones, which are the travel routes and then the um, the terror, the terror tokens and the terror deck. So let's talk about the travel routes. So with some of the newer scenarios, they're going to come with a separate sideboard, which then now, similar to the street locations or the streets, you now have a, uh, you know, travel locations which correspond to country roads or the harbor or, or mysterious locations like the Devil Reef, which is just an area that's fucking over there. Um, uh, to use the travel routes, you basically now have to spend money uh, to use them. And uh, that's that's that. Yep. What do you guys think of the travel routes? Yep. Go ahead. I was going to say, uh, it can get a little inconvenient if you don't have funds for whatever reason. Um, it You know, it does, since it does cost money to travel, which is fair, it can be kind of cumbersome and mm -hmm. a burden. And you're like, oh, well, I would like to help over there, but... Ooh, but it'll take me four turns to get money, so yeah. I guess uh, you're on your own. Yeah. So, I mean, overall, I wasn't super, like, it, not not that I wasn't enthused about the addition. It's just kind of like, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thematically, uh, I think it's nice, and it makes sense, and it's a fun idea to throw in a twist on movement. Um, mechanically, it just gets in the way of mm -hmm. getting around and getting places. Yeah. Yeah. Because it takes... A, a turn to collect the money. Yep. And then an extra turn or two to actually get across. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm right there with you, Brett. I think the uh, it thematically, it's like, oh, great. Yes, that's how you now have a way to travel, you know, through a dirt road to get to the village, or if you want to get to, uh, you know, Innsmouth Shore, you have to take a harbor to get there. Um, I like that. However, because of Arkham Horror Third, Arkham Horror Third Editions ludicrously stupid rule of one, uh, you can only do one type of action uh, per turn, yeah. uh, it drastically slows the game down. Because not only do you have to, like you said, get money, uh, which hardly anyone ever starts out with like, oh man, look at my $17 or okay. something. Two. <laughs> yeah, it's two. I had one because I'm a drifter. Even though you think since I'm a drifter, I'd be able to freely ignore that because uh, I find ways to get around. But... Nope. Uh, you had now have to spend a turn and then to move, and it's like, oh well, I don't have like, cause I don't have the dollar to take the country roads, I guess. So it'll just take me Not forever to get to Arkham to help out. I know it's a cooperative game, but man, we sure do a lot of the time. Uh, do spend a lot of time being by ourselves. Yeah, we we split up. Yeah, and never actually got back together. <laughs> yeah, I mean because it's like. Yeah, I mean, when you ran out of money and I'm over there fighting Dagon, it's just like, oh, I can come help. Oh, no, it'll actually take me quite a bit, too, because I, I can only move two spaces. Oh, but I... Unless I spend the money. Unless you spend the money to move additional. <laughs> move four, and then I can't make it across. Exactly. So it just... It, it expands the board in a absurd way where it's just annoying because in... In regular scenarios, it's one Arkham, so you can always kind of run around, but the addition of having money to cross to get to the other side is is just annoying. So, 
that's travel routes. Uh, then we go into the terror. So what terror is is supposed to represent the the, the populace of Arkham or of the locations, you know, becoming f freaked out. There's monsters running around, uh, cr crazy things happening. Um, and if uh, terror, it kind of replaced the anomalies. There's no anomaly deck where the anomalies were if one location ever got three doom, an anomaly token would come out and you had to go through. That was kind of like their... Their replacement for gates, because uh, there are no gates in third edition um, that you go through. That's kind of the anomaly. Uh, here, you don't do that. If a if a neighbor if an area ever gets six doom, you clear out one spot and place a terror, and then you take a card from the terror deck and you place it on top of the encounter deck, which is not what I thought it was. Was oh, this is going to be your replacement for the encounter, and it's going to function like an anomaly. It helps you get rid of terror tokens. Nope, it's just another card that go that you have to deal with before your actual encounter, which can be a double-edged sword. If you're trying to get a clue, at least it doesn't stop you from trying to get that clue. But if you don't get the clue card, then you just have two encounters, and the terror usually is a hindrance depending on how many are there. What do you guys think of the terror? Terror was just another way to kind of slow us down, in my opinion. Like, nothing really, like, oh, nothing really stuck in my head. I couldn't even give you an example of one that we encountered. That's fair, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, I'd say, you know, if it's the theme nicely. Sure. Mechanically, it just slows things down and gives you <laughs> unnecessary complications. Right. Yeah. And they're already difficult to gather resources and to utilize them. Yeah. Why are you making it more complicated? Yeah, that's... That's pretty much it in a nutshell. I really don't like them either. I mean, because now you have to spend influence to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. So while you're already getting bombarded with doom, mm -hmm. you're getting now bombarded with terror. And it's just like... And they don't do anything, really. Yep. It's kind of there. You just now stack... Because like, you just stack the, the cards on top of a, a thing. Yep. And it's like, okay, now we just have to deal with those. And it's also kind of fiddly because... Like, if the the terror card doesn't ever tell you to remove them, so it's like you you have an un, uneven number of tokens that are on the board versus cards that are on the deck. So it's like, do we resolve it? But there's still tokens here, so yeah. I don't get why these are still on the board. It's... Because um, with the anomalies, which weren't... Were, they were fine. Whenever you resolved it, you most likely removed Doom. That was you... Ow. Uh making progress towards dealing with the anomaly. Right. Here it's just like, oh, no, the, no, the monster was chasing you, but you outran it. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right, go to your encounter. And then it's like the encounter, it, it also is kind of a uh, thematic disconnect because it's like, oh, man, I, I outran this horrific beast that just ate a child whole. Then you read your encounter, it's like, you take a nice relaxing break on the bench in front of the, <laughs> at, at the park. And then you see a strange man, you talk to him, and he gives you some money. And it's like, what happened to the monster that I was just being chased by? Nope. Nope. Big they, don't, they don't come into the parks. <laughs> they're not allowed. Listen, they're not rude. They see you relaxing. I guess. It's just... It's fucking stupid. <laughs> I hate it. I really do. This expansion, like we mentioned, if you think the third edition is the best version of Arkham Horror, it's the, it's the best Cthulhu game you've ever played... Then Underdark Underdark Waves is going to be the best expansion that's come out because it, it gives you bang for your buck. You get a lot more scenarios, a lot more a lot more content. Mm -hmm. But if you are kind of hoping that a bigger box expansion would fix the issues that Third Edition brought, uh, it does not do that. It enhances them. It it, it, it actually <laughs> yes you're right it makes it worse because of that dumb fucking rule that they put in. It's like. Okay, how can we make that that obnoxious rule even more obnoxious? Ooh, now you're really going to feel how slow you are. Now you're going to really feel how human you are. I like to come home after a long day of work and just feel fucking useless. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... It's so obscene that I... It's it's like now... I, I, like I was, I'm mentally exhausted from just how drug out one scenario was. And it wasn't even exciting. It was literally, like, the, the scenario we did, spoilers, I guess, for a subpar scenario, it was like, oh, you got get some relics. 
Yes. Get rid of get rid of one and summon the god of the sea <laughs> no, the and baby. beat the shit out of him with a baseball bat. I had to beat the shit out of his mommy. Yeah. No, it was Father oh, Dagon you're, first, you're, and then you're like, man, yes, 13 health, I took him down, it was me and Duke, we, you know, the odds were against us, yeah. nope, actually, just bring the other one in. Yep. And it's like, wh what? <laughs> like, yeah. why? And I mean, that that is the, the fun humor of Arkham Horror, where it's just like, the undescribable horrors of space and then you just beat you just kill him with a shotgun <laughs> you're like man couldn't survive this yeah, no. carry this you fucking casual <laughs> <laughs> that's the humor of it however when you're when you go through the, the the monotony of like oh okay we have to get a clue and we have to we have to research it and we oh I, we failed every fucking die roll but we finally got it all right now we take this this um uh, you know whatever research deck and get some, or so this relic deck and we get those we have to Place the the leads, and we have to get them. We have to discard them to summon, and it's like okay. okay. Yeah. This came down to a bullet sponge boss, thirteen health, which I actually I could have weathered. It wasn't even hard. Um, it was more just gonna be annoying. It was the fact that like, hey, you had like a healing elixir, you could have came to help me, but I was oh, trying to right? No, but sorry, you actually don't have any money, so I guess you can't use the fairy. Right. So we're split up, and it'll take me another turn right. to get the money. To get across. Exactly. <laughs> it's just, it's so, it's it's faux difficulty yeah. that, yeah, the expansion, like you said, just enhances it, and I I hate it. So. Even even what we did accomplish didn't feel like there was any sense of accomplishment to it. Yeah. you like, made, Well, at that point, it was kind of an endurance test, <laughs> so it was like, okay, we overcame that. Instead of a celebration, it was like, okay, what's next? All right, yeah, what's the next? <laughs> Let me search through this. I mean, this is, this, this uh, deck is, is. Pulled from their game of Fallout, which was to represent the quests you get in Fallout. Uh, I have no problem with this actual deck. I have no problem with the scenarios, but it's just yeah, you're right. You mentioned it while we were playing that it, it's not so because because some games like Robinson Crusoe or uh, Pandemic are like have like a roller coaster. You do something good, you feel accomplished. It feels good. Yeah, we we built the shelter. You know, we hunted that. We got some food. We're good for a while. Pandemic, yeah, we cured out this whole area. We're good for a while. The roller coaster kind of thing. Yeah. Here, it's a it's just a slow sink. Mm -hmm. Like you're just like, "Oh, well, just being ground down yeah, to yeah. we're probably going to lose." Right. But it's going to take a damn long time to lose. Exactly. And it's like you never really want to feel that. If you're going to if you if you're going to lose, you should be able to be like, "Oh, I I know." Mm -hmm. Like I like I can see it coming. Yep. Um and then it's over and you're done. Because I remember you were like, "Have we? what are we doing? There was a part whenever the second card came out, you are like, what's the goal? Yeah. And I'm like, still get clues. Yeah. And yeah. That's it. That's, that is, that's yeah. always been the, the, the goal in Eldritch Horror and Arkham Horror. That's how you progress. Mm -hmm. um, but here, getting clues is such a fucking slog. Yeah. And coming from second edition where you just, oh, there's five, you know, there's five at the end visit the aisle. You know, I'm going to run over there, pick all those up because we need ten to complete that. Um, to complete that uh, that goal or that mythos card, um, but here it's not even a guarantee you're going to get a clue. So you waste your entire turn just oh, but it's one of these three cards. Okay, it wasn't that one. All right, I guess I'll kind of you know focus a little bit. Wasn't that one? Yep. Can't try All right. This turn. Yeah. So it uh, it's 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 just it's it's just a bad time. Unless you really like Arkham Horror Third Edition, yeah. then you'll like Under Dark Waves. Yeah. Uh, so Kat, even because you've never played Arkham Horror until until we were doing this expansion, just right? Now. Um, <clears throat> yeah. In our at the time, we liked Arkham Horror whenever we did our our run through and discussion over it. Originally, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's just, it's gotten worse. Every time we play it, yeah, we're just kind of like, eh. yeah. Like the luster wore off, and we're just like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's like, oh god, yeah. I'm like, I'm mentally exhausted <laughs> from trying to force myself to be immersed you yeah. know uh and yeah this just okay yeah um i mean and everything about it is just slow like yeah. and not to i don't want to send you off onto a bunning trail but for for how long it takes to set it up it's one of those games where you're like this better be good right like <laughs> right yeah and i hope the scenario is good because i mean with so the the game is like an amalgamation of all their other arkham games mansions of madness is the scenarios. Arkham Horror LCG has some terminology, the way the monsters work and stuff like that. Um, 
Then it has Eldritch Horror with the, uh, of course, with Encounter decks and regular, um, like, and, and the Clue events. Like, I don't mind the Clue events. I think that's awesome because that's a thematic way of you getting clues to progress the scenario. But the fact that you're not guaranteed to get it is just annoying. Like, I don't know why they couldn't just do it to where it goes to Ma's Boarding House and you have a Ma's Boarding House clue card. Yep. Like, it could have easily just been that. Because you're not even guaranteed to get the clue. Yeah, I, I, most of the ones we got was gain one. But there's times where you have to make a test. Mm -hmm. And then so, oh, I guess I didn't get it. Yep. So, and then the fact that they added this mythos, these mythos tokens, is just so, so fucking slow. Because... Normally, an Eldritch in 2nd Edition was a card that had Eldritch has uh, icons on it. Similar to kind of like these icons. Oh, you know an event happens, you know, or something. Uh, but that's just one card for the whole... For everyone playing. Mm -hmm. Here, it's draw two tokens. So now, not only do you have to draw two and be like, Oh, okay, so that's that's a Reckoning. All right, everyone, check your Reckonings. Mm -hmm. uh, are we... Okay, let's check Monster Reckonings. Scenario... Re okay, so we did that. Okay. And, uh, oh, that was a... Uh, uh, a doom. Okay, so let's fucking fuck with the card. So doom comes out. Okay, cat, here's your turn to draw two. Oh, that was another. You know, it's just. I know there were times where I was grabbing it and I was like, we were still finishing up on Brett's, and I'm like, oh no, we're yeah. still going. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, not only because you also have cards and stuff that pertain to the other thing. So one token draw can take five minutes to figure out how everything's going. Yep. And. It, I mean, I was hoping you hope for the blanks, not because, uh, not because you don't want the, the game to do something bad to you, just so you don't have to fucking waste ten minutes. You can move on. <laughs> like it's a great blanks. Okay, now I can draw. Yeah. Yeah. And for a game that's as slow, you want to be invested. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The entire time. Oh yeah. So it's not that the game is. It it has nothing to do with how long the game takes. Oh yeah. I mean, we played we played games for you know ten hours. Yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. it's been great the whole time. Right, one game. Yeah, legacy type game. Yeah, uh, this is not it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> this is a legacy game <laughs> that should be about you know, an hour. An hour, hour and, hour and a half. Yeah, like I'll play Elder Chor for four hours mm -hmm. and have a blast the entire time because there's so much going on, um, and there's it, it's weird how disjointed this one feels from the other ones. This is mm -hmm. a step brother. Or the, the the cousin of those other great games, mm -hmm. um, the one we don't talk about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> kind of has some, some. Hey, second edition. Oh, and you brought third edition. <laughs> Mom made me. <laughs> yeah, right. This is my little brother. Third edition. Why'd you bring him? I had to. It was the only way I can come over and hang out. It's like fine. Just give him the unplugged controller and yeah, okay, we'll, the calculator. <laughs> and we'll tell him he's playing. We'll just set. We'll set up Arkham Horror Third Edition over there for the people we don't like. Welcome. That. So. Uh. So yeah. That. I mean. That's pretty much it. I know. Um. Uh, do you have anything you want to talk about for Third Edition? Nah. Cool. Well. On a scale of 1 to 10, Kat and I are going to do three different rankings. We're going to rank the expansion if you like 3rd edition. We're going to rank it if you for us if you don't like it. And we're going to rank 3rd edition as a whole. And Brett is just going to do one ranking. So, Can I come to play? <laughs> you come over and like I have to set up again and you're like... Mom said you had to let me play. <laughs> All right. Mom's not fucking here. <laughs> Mom OD'd in the tub. Oh I told you she was sleeping. Hey. Okay. <laughs> this game makes me want to OD. Oh, no. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it you does. Take, take all the melatonin we have. <laughs> all, and I'll sleep forever. <laughs> and that will feel... Sleeping for eternity will feel shorter than playing one scenario of third edition. Under Dark Waves, if you really, really get a hard-on for third edition, is probably an eight. It gives you more of the game. Uh, gives you more scenarios, more characters, just more, more, couple, more. A couple minor new, new mechanics. Yeah, new mechanics. Or like, if you're getting tired of the, the same thing, it does add a little bit new mm -hmm. uh, mechanics. Uh, for me, um, actually, yeah, the more the more I've talked about it, I'm going to give it a four. Like, it, it enhances already what I believe to be bad mechanics in the game. And the scenarios uh, that are in it, I couldn't give two shits about. So it's an in's mouth is one of my favorite uh, uh, areas mm -hmm. in Lovecraft lore um and i did not once feel like we were in Innsmouth. Innsmouth, Innsmouth. Innsmouth. 
That is true. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm dying. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping it's the... It's all that hate it's, it's, coming yeah, out. <laughs> oh, just cough of blood. It's the <laughs> ulcer that this fucking game gave me. Uh, so, yeah, I, I really, really just didn't like it. And Arkham Horror as an overall game is a five. Yeah. It's, it's pure average, but yeah. it's a game that I have no reason to play because there's... The LCG that I have everything for, it's Mansions of Madness I have everything for, and Elder Shore that I have everything for. Yeah. And I yeah. love all those games. Yeah. So, why keep it? Fair. Cat. Fair. All right, so I'll go for Under Dark Waves, if you like, third edition. Um, I'm going to give it a seven, because I still don't think that it brings enough to the table, and especially um, just with what we've been talking about. For it being a big, big box, you would expect more. I don't know. Sure. I don't know. Something. I mean, it's really a fantasy flight. What they make is LCGs. That's it's true, it's yeah. Arkham War LCG and Marvel Champions and everything else are just like, they they pad the box with that, that, that uh, trench insert. Because I can actually show you how they how they package this. Oh, um, uh, yeah. Yes. This is where all the content goes. Yeah. You'd think there'd be something. Like, nope. Yeah. So they, they, they inflate. This could have been a small box. Half, half the size. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. But, I mean... This is a big box. It gets recognized on shelves, and it makes uh -huh. you feel like you're getting more. Uh -huh. Yep. Oh, man. Boy, is it just like opening up chips, and you're like, that's a lot of air. Yeah, right? Oh, <laughs> man. Spent okay. four bucks on this. <laughs> yeah. But it does definitely give you more content than the uh, the Dead of Night. That, that one was a small box, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. yeah. And then just it as like a standalone, um, since I don't really care for the third edition, uh, I'll give it a, a five- and then, um, and then I'm still gonna take like Arkham Horror Third Edition, just in general, down to a five. Uh, Arkham Hor Horror used to be my favorite game. I think that was the first game we ever played together. I think so. Ever, and I loved did we play, it. Did we play Arkham Horror or Talisman? I think it was Talisman. Then we played okay. Arkham Horror. So, but still though, it was the right up there with like getting into board games and it was i just loved the theme mm -hmm. and then now it's kind of just like uh so i'd rather play mansions of madness yeah or mountains of madness oh yeah that's i wasn't including that or in, in this or type of eldritch genre. hoarder Hor hoarder <laughs> the eldritch, <laughs> the hoarder. eldritch hoarder. i'm hor i'm hoarding all the eldritch <laughs> what is that it's no one knows <laughs> It's insanity. It's indescribable. Um, <laughs> Quick, let me describe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's, yeah. Yeah, so 755. Okay. All right. All right. So mine is a composite of both because I don't know how to separate the two, having not played it before. So overall, this is definitely not my type of game. Again, I love the theme, but mechanically, overly complicated, overly difficult, Unnecessary. Um, lots of cards, lots of different things that can happen to keep track of every single turn, and then every turn adds more. So those are all turn offs for me. Um, so overall. But I, I should state that there have been games that we have played that do that same thing, but you. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, the fact that it's cooperative mm -hmm. uh, helps me a lot, but it doesn't get o overcome any of the problems that we have discussed. Yeah. So I'm going to give it overall for myself and my style of play three. Right on. Just wild. Yeah. Fair though. Fair yep. though. All right. So that's our thoughts on Arkham Horror and the expansion under Dark Waves. Let us know what you think of the game and the expansion in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching, and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon, and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.